Now we're going to talk about Anne Bradstreet. You don't really need to know the, her birth and death years. Um, in this class, I don't too much make you remember dates and numbers. Um, I'd rather you just know what literary period they came from. You know, sometimes I might ask you to remember the century, but, you know, that's about it. Anyway, Anne Bradstreet. Um, you don't need to write this. It's really here just so you kind of understand that her life was a little bit different than most the lives of most of the Puritans. Um, her father believed that she should be educated and that she should have a classic education. Most Puritans believe that she shouldn't have a classic education because it didn't relate to the Bible. If you were educated in Greek and Latin and French, um, then you had access to the, um, you know, Greek and Roman myths, and you had access to all kinds of um, fiction that Puritans didn't normally want you to have access to. Um, she did have a rather nice life. It wasn't the best life, but she did have a rather nice life. Um, she was not considered appropriate because she wrote. Women weren't supposed to write. Women were supposed to be silent. Um, you know, they were supposed to rely on the man. This is a very, um male dominated society at this time and she was often not accepted by her community um, she does move around a lot they do have eight children um, she was kind of a sickly woman it may be in part of the fact that she kept moving all the time and that she had eight children. Um, <clears throat> I do want you to write this. Um, because women aren't supposed to think for themselves and they're not supposed to be educated, she didn't really want to publish any of her writings. So instead of publishing it, she just held on to it. But her brother took some of her poems to England and published them on his, I mean, on, on his terms, and they sold very well, and she got the money from it. However, in America, she was not that accepted. Um, most of her poetry was published posthumously, which means after her death. You do need to know this. Um, lots of her poetry had lots of sarcasm in it. She is um, a feminist before feminism is cool. And, um, you know, she does question God a lot of times, but she doesn't question the existence of God. She questions whether God is as angry as the Puritans make him out to be. Um, you know, the way that I explain this is Old Testament God is extremely angry. New Testament God is very forgiving. Um, and this is not... She, she has the idea that... It's more like she believes more in New Testament God than Old Testament God, okay? And you'll see that when you read her poetry. This is one of the very first um, printings and publications of her poetry. Alright, I do need you to know this. <clears throat> Keep in mind, I do not speak French. I can speak Spanish, but not French. So, um... I'm not even going to try to pronounce this name. But her poetry was very influenced by this French author um, who was very popular during the 17th century. Uh, a lot of his impact on her poetry had to deal with format, style, um, you know, and voice. 
then she kind of stuck to this courtly style that was really popular with William Shakespeare. So a lot of her poetry sounds very formal. Um, you know, a lot of her imagery is you're going to feel like it's weird. Like she's talking about God. She's talking about her husband. But she's also, she doesn't come out and say it. But like she hints around with with sexual imagery. Um, she uses it mostly to talk about love and relationships. Um, a paradox is when two things seem to contradict one another, but they don't. They actually work together. Um, and she kind of looks at the paradox between what women really are and, you know, the recessive nature of Puritanism. She really looks at it in relationship to her husband because, she, like, in most of her poetry, she just talks about how in love she is with him. Okay, you're going to read Anne Bradstreet's poetry in class, and we're going to annotate them together so that you know how I want you to annotate text. And... I hope you enjoy it.